Hi, and welcome to another one of our videos from the Geospatial Centroid. Today we're going to be learning about interactive maps in R with Leaflet, and we're going to show you how to host those on GitHub so other people can see your interactive map. My name is Matt Ross, and I am the Interim Director of the Geospatial Centroid and an Assistant Professor in Ecosystem Science and Sustainability at CSU. So today's learning objectives are you're going to learn how to host a web page on GitHub, you're going to learn how to make interactive maps, and you're going to learn how to host an interactive map on the web. So to get started, uh, we're going to sort of launch into GitHub. You don't have to know how to do this. There, there'll be a link in the description to another video on how to use GitHub. But the key idea here is that GitHub usually holds code to share and collaborate and collaboratively code with others. Um, but it can also hold host um, HTMLs or web pages. So to do that, you just make a repository like I've done here. Today, we're going to be visualizing the Colorado um, precipitation network at different airports in Colorado. And to do that, to host a, a map, you just have to go into the settings of your GitHub repository once you make one, um, which again, you can see in another video. And then you just say you want to publish it as a GitHub page. And so that's, I've done that already. And if you open this page right now, it's just going to go to the readme because there's no um, files in here. But by the end of today, when you go to this website, there will be uh, an, a map of uh, precipitation gauges in Colorado. So that's just pretty easy to set up. You just set it up to the main, and then all you have to do is name the file you want to be visualized as index.html, which is just sort of HTML code for like the front page. So if we go back to our code, we're going to copy this code, and then we'll open our studio. And we will start a new project. You can see I've actually already started it, but I'm going to restart it. Okay, sorry for the brief pause there. I had to reconfigure R. But you're going to um, start a new project, and then you'll come to this screen, and you'll get version control. And then you can use Git. We'll just paste this in here, and we'll call it uh, USA Precip Map. And you're going to create that project. And what it'll do is it'll clone all the stuff that's up on GitHub, and so that'll all be locally. So we wrote this little readme that you saw on the web page, and it's just this, that's all it shows. But here we're gonna uh, create a new file. We're gonna make a new R markdown. We'll just call it um, Ream uh, Airport Precip Locations. It's appropriate that I'm writing about uh, Precip right now. I think we're gonna get our first rain storm in the next couple minutes in Colorado. Uh, so this is just uh, creating an R markdown file. Again, this this video sort of is, is, assumes you, you know some of this stuff or that you want to learn it. So this is just an R markdown. I'm going to save it as just uh, index again, and that's just going to tell GitHub that I want this rendered live as a web page. So then I'll save that. So that's just called index. And now we're going to load in our packages that we need to make this run. So we'll do ream, which is a package that has uh, uh, location data for all the different precip gauges at airports across the country, uh, really across the globe actually. We're going to use a package called SF, which is a spatial package in R. We're going to use another package called Leaflet, that, what, that is what makes the interactive maps. And then we're going to use a package called MapView, which simplifies uh, interacting with Leaflet. So let's just go ahead and plop all those in. Um, and then now we'll go back to the trusty internet to ask for some help. So let's look at the pa the package called Ream. So I'm just going to type in Ream Cran. Uh, oh, not Crane. <laughs> That's a person. Ream Cran. And we'll go to this package, look at its documentation, and basically the University of Iowa aggregates all the airport precipitation data as a as a service. And um, there's this function here called Ream Networks. And what Ream Networks does is it pulls the network name for all these different networks because some are in Saudi Arabia, some are in China, some are in the US. Um, and it, it sort of puts all their names together. And then you can use this function called Ream Stations to find out where they are and how much data they have. So let's go ahead and do network. And we'll do Ream Networks. And that's just going to pull that network data. We can go ahead and view that. And we can see that it has these different codes. We're going to just plot Colorado data today, just because that's where we are. So we'll go not to Columbia. We will go to Colorado. So I'm just going to copy this code. And then now I'm going to say co-ream is, um, we're going to do ream stations now. And the network is going to equal what I just copied. Uh, so Dropbox is interfering. 
So now we have uh, co ream as a as a as a item, and we'll check that out. So we'll just see what this looks like. Okay, so it looks like it's a table, just like an Excel sheet if you use Excel a lot, that has an ID an, of of the station, like at the Air Force Academy, a name for that station, and then long and lat. The problem here is this is not a spatial object. So if I do plot something like plot co ream, what R is going to think is I want to plot all the data against each other. Um, so that's just kind of useless in this case. Uh, what we actually wanted to see is if it's spatial data. So it's not spatial data yet. So let's make a spatial object and we'll call it co spatial. And we're going to use this function from the SF package called STSSF. And what it's going to do is take a table, and, which is co ream, and it's going to convert it to a spatial object. And we'll just do that using this function. We have to tell it the coordinates. So we have to say long and then lat because it's XY, not lat long which I always got confused in the past. And then I just know that I happen to know that its projection is WGS84. We can have another video on projections, but I'll just say is it's WGS84, which the EPSG for that is 4326. And the EPSG is just a shorthand code for projections. Again, probably a whole another video on that. I think Beth maybe has one already, at least for her class she does. So now we have this object called CoSpatial. And now if we try to plot it, and I'm just going to comment out view so it doesn't show when we knit this. Um, stop that co-spatial. We're going to get just a spatial map of the ID and the name. Again, Colorado is a square, so this is sort of boring. And that's why we need an interactive map to look at these locations. So here's where the leaflet part of this is. So I'm just going to call this little chunk area data acquisition. Oopsie. And then we're going to make our interactive map. I compulsively save my code, and then that's why it's getting mad at me because it's um, trying to sync with Dropbox. So this we'll call interactive map. And here we're just going to use another, we're going to go back to the internet for help, as a good coder always does. So I'm going to type in leaflet R Studio. They have a really good guide. This is where you would really go if you wanted to start using this in your life. Um, but I'm just going to copy their example to get us started. Uh, this example should work because it's straight from their code. This makes an object called M. That object is an interactive map. R was built in Auckland, New Zealand. So we're in New Zealand. That's what we're doing. And then I'm going to see if I can modify it based on advice from the website um, on how to sort of modify this. So as they say, this add, let's just like break this code down. First of all, we're saying, hey, I want to make an interactive map with this leaflet function. And I'm not feeding it any data yet. I'm just saying I have data. Then I want to add some base tiles. So this just adds OpenStreetMap. So that's what you're going to see when you zoom around. Uh, obviously, for all of this to work, you need to be connected to the internet because it's live streaming that map. Then you want to add markers. So this is the lat long. Um, for our demonstration, we're not going to use markers. We're going to use uh, cir circles. So if we go back up to our studio, we can go to um, markers and see if there's other ways to add markers. So here they have this one where they add circles. And if you look, they're actually adding a data frame in here. So they're actually adding data to the leaflet call. And so that's the kind of syntax we will copy. So we're going to alter this code now a little bit. We'll say co-spatial because we have this spatial data set. We're going to delete this add markers. And we're going to add uh, circle markers instead. And then we're just going to do, um, we're just going to call that new object. And so now we have a spatially explicit zoomable version of where all these um, maps are. But I find this still somewhat unsatisfying. Nothing pops up. It, you can't really change the base map. You might want to see satellite imagery. You might want to see you know, a dark image. Um, you can see all the different airports in Colorado, which is kind of cool. So this is DIA. Uh, there's a lot more airport network stations than you might think. Um, and so this is all the data when we have precip data in Colorado. It's, it's coming from these 72 stations. But again, I don't find this map particularly uh, beautiful. So we're going to take a major short, shortcut. And we're going to make an interactive map with map view. And map view is this amazing package that basically pre-codes a bunch of stuff for you to make interacting with leaflet interactive maps way easier. So now I'm just going to use, this is the final line of code I will write. It's just going to be map view co-spatial. 
And that's going to generate a sort of really nice interactive map that has a bunch of features that the other one didn't. So first of all, I can click on these and I get some geometry. I get the ID, the name. Um, I can also turn on the imagery so I can sort of look at like what is the context. You can add uh, topography so we can use the open topo map. That, that's really useful in Colorado, of course, with big variation in elevation. Um, and so then now we have this interactive map, and the next question is, how would I share this with someone? And this is where our Markdown and GitHub come into play. So now I'm just going to uh, go ahead and knit this document. And knitting, if you, you don't know, it's taking all this code, and it's going to turn it into an HTML. And that HTML looks like this. So we can look at that in full screen. And so now we have our interactive maps. They're embedded here, and we have both of them. And so then we will close this. And then now all we need to do is commit or send our HTML file back up to GitHub. And I'll just say demo finished. So I'm going to commit this, which means I'm going to save it locally. And then I'm going to push it, which means I'm going to save it up in GitHub. And as soon as it gets up into GitHub, GitHub's going to say, oh, no, they sent me a new index.html. And now I want to render that. So if we go back up to our GitHub site and we refresh it, we should have all of our code. And if you remember, I was, went into the settings to be able to host this online. And that spit out a link. This may be dead, and I may have to, because it takes a second. Yeah, it's going to take a second for it to render it. Um, so I will pause this video for a second. And then uh, once it renders the HTML, you'll see how it's hosted online. And you could just go to this website and see the maps. OK, so I paused for a little while it rendered. But now if we open this link in a new tab, we actually see this interactive map. And it's not static. So you can this, this is a live interactive little mini map. And it has all the features that it had locally. So this is a really nice way to share with people um, a quick interactive map. Maybe you're selecting site locations for a sampling season. Or maybe you want to share with someone some interesting visual you made and you want it to be interactive, um, you can do it in a pretty quick, easy way. Obviously, you could make these maps more complex and more beautiful, um, but that was sort of just a quick introduction. I hope you found it useful. And if we'll just go back to our learning objectives, hopefully you learned how to host a web page on GitHub. You learned how to make interactive maps. And now you know how you can host that map on the web. Thanks so much.